Hey, can you grab me a loop up there? Where was loop? Let's see how this connection looks. Thank you. So you brought in the uh, the, pos the, uh, the 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 main positives to for the uh, auxiliary and the and, and the master switch, right? The main and the auxiliary are already soldered to the board, right? For the buttons, yeah, yeah. Both buttons are already soldered. But the grounds are not. They These can are the be grounds. Wired together, yeah. And then we'll put them where they're at. Now wait, where did they go? I need the diagram. All right, let's look up there, or I'll look right here, actually. I'm almost there. Okay, here we go. Oh, it's the same uh, ground as that. Do you see? It's the same uh, ground as the... Uh, that I already have on there for something. For the LED, for the accent LED. Along this row. So, that. You can come in on the top if you'd like. It's pretty so close it's to the top, right? So come in on the top. Looks like the first one. Looks like uh, try to pinpoint double check it. Here right next little. to the three little yeah, minis. Yeah, the three little minis, right? And then that one. And then that one right there. Yeah, perfect. So that's getting both our negatives, you right? You could pretend that. Got a lot of wire under here it's going to be tight kind of getting it to mush down mm. start like maybe working it with the heat already welcome saber friends This is an episode of Lightsaber Hangout with Jedi Hesh. I'm Space Windu. I got Jedi Hesh right next to me, Harris from Saber Talk. Yo, yo. So I will uh, turn the camera on him in a minute. I just wanted to talk to you guys real quick first. Um, Harris is working on a lightsaber for me. Um, it's a it's a Graflex. It's a Corbanth 2.0. Yep. Yeah, so he's working on a Graflex. He's wiring it up. He's having a good time. Um, we've just been spending some time together working on this lightsaber. Uh, it's a CF10, and uh, it's for it's for Roberts. So we're just kind of finishing it up. We're just uh, putting the uh, 
power to the board, putting the kind of final connections to there. So then after that's done, we will kind of test charge it, stuff like that. I'm not sure where I want to put this little conglomerate of wires here. Got to stuff them somewhere. <laughs> What's cram, that? You got to cram foo them somewhere. Cram foo, baby. This is a lightsaber that Harris recently completed that I want to talk about. He made it from uh, MHS parts. Love my MHS. This is a surprise lightsaber for uh, someone close to Harris. So I can't reveal too much about where this lightsaber is going, but uh, we can talk all about uh, the lightsaber itself. Has a crystal focus version 10. He's leaving it plain bodied here because uh, the new owner is probably going to like make uh, decisions on what to what to change, what to color, and maybe weather it or powder coat it, or you know, in the future, kind of update it, change it, um, do what he wants to make it his own kind of thing. So for now, um, Harris just kind of has it plain, um, but it does have some really cool details, like down here. It has like graph flex style lines that um, that kind of connect the power to the belt clip um, right in the center. So there you can tell. Just goes right through those points. I think that looks really cool. It's kind of a neat detail. Um, he's got a couple little <laughs> accent LEDs. I think Harris told me the saber is like low on power, so actually making uh, this purple, it might it might uh, turn the speaker a little static. I don't know if that happens, but white main button. Hey there, Volkswagen gamer. Thanks for checking it. Thanks for checking this out. This is Harris's saber that he made recently. Got the uh, thumb screw for the blade retention. He's got a, a, a black anodized thumb screw from the custom saber shop. This is a saber based on the Kiati Mundi um, look. As you can tell by, like the control box area here is got the uh, got the two LEDs there, and Harris kind of had like inspiration from Kiati Mundi's lightsaber to make to make this lightsaber. Yeah, the owner is uh, is a fan. He's a, he's a Kai fan. Kiati <laughs> Mundi. So this this does um, being a CF ten. Does like any color here. Now I think the board's down at the bottom section. Where's the board in this? In the in the rib section? Yeah, the board the board is actually underneath and the battery's uh, in the grip section there. Um so it's got some nice balance. It's balanced out pretty nice. You know, it's not all the weight isn't at one end. I kind of tried to balance the power out to us. The battery's up around here. And the board's tucked in underneath all the electronics there. Mm. It's kind of a sleeper. It's a cram foo. Um, yeah. This was like kind of a, a more of a budget lightsaber. Yeah, it was a definitely a budget saber, but I wanted to make the most of it for what it cost, you know. Um, there's all told, you're, you're looking about, can I say how much? What do you think? Do you think? I think so. You know, yeah, I mean, it's, your it's, cost to build this? Yeah. Yeah. You could say that. This is, you know, of all yeah. parts from the custom saber shop, basically, right? Yeah. It's all, it's mostly custom saber shop stuff. And uh, just goes to show you what you can build. It's, that's under 400 bucks, basically. Gets you a nice hill. Yeah. The Crystal Focus 10 is a lot uh, better value than like all the, all the predecessors. Oh, yeah. All the predecessors of Crystal Focus. 
that were like basically double the price. So you really get a lot for for this. This font right here is Mad Cow Shatterpoint, and it's like made into smooth swing. I love the smooth swing. Yeah. Absolutely unbelievable. It's got a tri Very light. Up Such the top. a light lightsaber. Such a lightweight uh, lightsaber. Yeah, you think. I, I do. I've had jobs in the past where I add a little bit of uh, like some lead fishing weights. I like to add sometimes to add a little bit of um, a little bit of weight to it. Mm. You know? Because you want to actually. Oh, you think it's heavy? Or you no, I think it's very lightweight. Oh, it's lightweight. Okay. Which There's not good. much in it. It's it's got uh, a single eighteen six fifty. It's got uh, a CFX, and and it's got about uh, I don't know, a mile of wire in it. <laughs> yeah, and like this isn't the blade that uh, is going with you. Said it's like longer, but at least with this shorter one, I can kind of wave it around right here. Yeah, this is this is this is going to be a gift for someone special, and uh, I'm just using one of my beater blades on it right now just to test it. Um, I have his blade at home. It's nice and pristine. Yeah, even though these switches take up a lot of space, uh, they're yeah. The card is sits right underneath them. So small now. The the board is so tiny that it can basically you know this is MHS V1, so you have a kind of a lot of room in there now. Yeah, it considering didn't, what we what we have to work with now. Yeah, uh, it didn't used to feel that way. Yeah, the parts are smaller. But now you know, the CFX we only use yeah. Uh, one well, battery. you could use a NeoPixel blade if you wire the board a certain way. Absolutely. Like the the way Harris is wiring his board right now. Let me just switch the camera here. Uh, the way Harris is wiring this Crystal Focus 10 tonight for the lightsaber that he's working on is for NeoPixel. So Working it's got a slightly here. different different wiring scheme. So when you when you start building your lightsaber, you're actually going to have to choose uh, which way you want to go. Because at least at this point in the game, um, it's it, it, there are ways to do it. Believe me, I, I know of ways to do it. But at this point in the game, you're going to have to choose. Do you want NeoPixel or do you want in RGB in, uh, in Hilt? Because or, or you like wire it differently. My personal hilt, instead of going with RGB, now it is a it's a Crystal Focus Nine, in my personal hilt, and that's got a green green white, and that green green allows me to get a little bit brighter blade, for uh, for an RGB style, you know, instead of having the red green and blue, it's all one color, mm. and it's a little bit brighter because we're using two LEDs instead of the, but I, you know, I mean, this one I'm working on here is a Neo Pixel, and. Uh, this, the new pixels are pretty bright man, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, we're going to have actually, I'll, I'll grab just because in about probably 20 minutes or yeah, so, we're going to be ready to test it. Yeah. So hopefully it does turn on with the new pixel. We'll find out. So hopefully. something I'm doing next, the board's kind of like half mounted into here. You can see right here. I'm trying to go most of the wiring to the bottom of the board. I don't know if you can see it there. I'm kind of watching on the side. Right here. I'm trying to get most of my wire tucked in around the, uh, the battery. There's a lithium ion 18650 battery in there. And, uh, and uh, there's also right here, I don't know if you can see it, there's some brass shielding used. And uh, there's a blinky LED under there. So once you activate the kill key right here, it's got an in-hill kill key. So you never have to remove the kill key. You just spin it. But uh, once you power it up, that light will start uh, blinking to let you know the board's awake. So the next thing we're going to do, I'm going to bring these two. And these are my negatives coming off of my switches. So where are the switches? Here's one switch right here. And that's a tactile switch. And that's going underneath the uh, oh, housing plate. Did I not put plate. that in yet? Did not put yeah, that in yeah, yet. Yeah, Anthony's going to embed that sucker in there nice and tight. And, uh, and then our master switch our main auxiliary switch is right here and that's going on to the card Here's the card it's going to fit in there we're going to build that up a little bit and uh so this is our activation we're Actually, trying to hit the switches too. you know i will i will put the aluminum backing on this because i think yeah, we need to make yeah, it a little thicker before. 
Yep, thickened it up a little bit. So uh, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, I don't know if you can see here, I'm going to, I'm going to pre-tin the top of this pad right here. And then I'm going to bring this black and blue wire. These are both of my negatives going to my switches. How do I know by color wise? I mean, one switch blue, one switch black. And actually, um, so they're already set to the bottom of the board. Um, these are our negatives. So these are going to come to that fourth little circle there. Um, when we're referring to this, this is the top of the board. This has the, uh, the chip here, the chip set on the top of the board. So the bottom is actually the, uh, the SD card holder. And up top is now our our jack for our rice board. You can plug it into rice right here. And uh, this is a standard chassis, nothing too fancy with it. We did doctor it up a little bit. I colored the switch there, give it a little color. Um, fancied up the battery a little bit before we embedded it in. And uh, so now our wires are coming all down here. We're just trying to train the wires is what I like to do. I keep pulling them, keep angling them, get them to go where I want them to go. Every once in a while, a little heat is really good on our wire. So it helps everything just fold up nice, kind of tucked into place. So I'm going to put a little heat there, spread that around. And then we're going to push the board down. And that's what we call cram foo. That's how we... Uh, kind of get that board to sit where we want. We've got a couple wires still. We need to go to the bottom of this board. We're not totally done yet. But um, for right now, I want to get these two wires mounted to the top of the board. And again, these are our switch negatives coming from both our master switch and our auxiliary switch. Yeah, so those can be like kind of brought to one. Yeah, one pad together, the uh, top of the negative pad. Yeah. Right so, uh, like I said, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna pretend that pad there. Yeah, the type of battery can that. Can I angle that camera a little lower? Uh, yeah. Do you want me to so, kind of aim it down a little bit? Yeah, got it. A little better. Yeah, we got a little better shot of shot of my work pad here. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, that um, let me just mention the type of battery with the specifics of that because yep. you were talking about the 18650 mm -hmm. um, and I just have the stats on it. It is a uh, it is a PCB protected custom saber shop. I think it's a Panasonic brand, although it's not saying that on the sticker here. I think when I bought it, it was a uh, it was it was labeled as Panasonic. I think they have Panasonic and, so and Sony as the two higher range batteries. And this one has a 15 amp capacity. Uh, so you kind of need uh, the, the best battery you can get when you're running the NeoPixel. So I just wanted to mention that. Okay, so this is like microscopic here. I don't know if you can see it, but something I learned from Anthony. Anthony likes volcanoes, right? With oh, volcanoes yeah. and solder. So we got a little point coming up right there. And that does look good, but I, I, you know what? No, I'm touching. I'm touching the pad next to it. So that's not a good thing. That's a no-no. I'm going to use a little bit of heat off my tip here and see if I can pull that out. Yep, I think I got it. So it's definitely pre-tinned right now. Kind of the nice thing about connecting the uh, the uh, power last is that you can avoid like you do something like that. It's no big deal. But if the yeah. power was connected, who knows? Yep. Some issues. Yeah. Cleaned it up. Everybody makes mistakes. So I got it in there cleaner. I'm gonna get a little solder on top of there just to build that little volcano up again. So what I just did is I just accidentally touched the pad next to the one that I'm working on. We don't want that. We don't want any pads touching. Yeah, Volkswagen Gamer says his uh, first build had a lime green white for the flash on clash. 
right. such a great color, but I'm definitely tempted by all the NeoPixel stuff. Yeah, the NeoPixel stuff, you know, I just was, I just got sent a few pictures by, uh, by uh, uh, one of my friends who has a NeoPixel Saber that I built for him, actually the staff. If you guys go to my channel to see uh, Francis Saber staff, it's like a Darth Maul style Saber staff that is like a custom. And he sent me some pictures over uh, Halloween. And I mean, the entire blade is kind of glowing, you know, a little bit more so than uh, right. sometimes the standard LED looks. This is just like ultra aura around it. It's kind of crazy. That's awesome. I love that. I think the aura around the hilt, around the blade, is what gives it the, the realism, the real effect. You know? Yeah. Sort of the Jedi uh, says can't use the USB on a CFX instead of the rice port. I think that's what Harris meant when he said rice port. He was kind of pointing to the USB because, uh, he know, he, he, uh, yeah, yeah, USB port. he kind of meant to say that. Yeah. 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 Volkswagen gamer says, uh, he's been working with Saber forge hilts and that taught him the ways of cram food. Nice. Thanks guys for watching, man. Yeah, we appreciate this you guys. Uh, this is playtime for me. Yeah, see, I'm kind of forcing Harris to work here. It's good that he enjoys it. And, of course, the, the best feeling in the world is that first boot up. Oh, yeah. Oh, my Lord. Well, we'll have to Give set me up solder the SD card. Look at some solder break. Yeah, right uh, up there. Oh, Touch it. Oh, uh, that's it. I think that's it. Yeah. I'm gonna use a little bit of braid, heat it up, see if I can pull some of this solder that ran off to the side. I don't want those pads touching. I'm nervous now. You know, I find when you want to use some desolder braid, you you got to get it good and hot. How about you, Ant? Yeah, for sure. I need to kind of heat it. I'm just gonna hold the tip on it right there for a second. I'll heat it up. It's kind of made out of copper, right? Piece of solder break. Yeah. So what it does is when it gets hot enough, it, it'll pull the solder into the copper braid. Then we can cut that piece off of the solder braid or whatever. Pulls it away from what it's on. Let me know if you need me to hold something. I'm working on a, a little uh, sketch for another help for Harris here. I think I got a good idea of how you can cut, cut the shrouds for this other hilt. I'm not sure about the emitter here. The sun belts. Here, I lost a wire. One of my positive switches. I lost it. I'm gonna let you put it back. Okay. So I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I'm diabetic. My hands shake a little bit, so sometimes I'm a little sensitive to the little tiny micro stuff. I gotta let Ann clean that up a little bit. Oh, I see that. You see what that I did? Accidentally. Yeah. Okay. Oh, is that what it was? The accent? I thought it was the yeah. switch. Okay. Yeah. yeah. The accent LED. So this is Luke, everybody. Hi, Luke. Say hello, boy. People know Luke. Luke, 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 Luke. Luke,
Did you undo the, uh, the connection you needed? What's that? Did you undo the connection you needed? You needed to yeah, I was working on the top, but then the two pads got bumped. So I tried to clean that up a little bit. So what did you think of the rise of Skywalker? Oh, the trailer? Yeah. Well, you know. Talk about that for a minute. I don't think we were texting about it, but yeah. I was busy that day, and I didn't get a chance actually to talk to that. You know, I want to give it a chance, you know? I kind of, you know, the little kid in me wants to like it, of course, you know? I want to like it, but I, I just, I don't know, man. I, I don't I don't know if we're going to get what we want out of this flip. I think they're... They're selling us short, I think. Mm -hmm. So, what, what is it, about two months away? A month away? I think it's about a month away now. Yeah. I'm scared. <laughs> I'm scared, man. I'm scared. Well, but how much more damage can be done, really? I'm, yeah, I'm really. scared, man. I mean, I hope. I think first the of all, damage was done already. First scene in the movie, man. I mean, I, you know, Luke throws the saber over her shoulder and. and that really like I was like what? what what wait what just happened you know so I don't think that uh, they should they should fix that man <laughs> fix fucking Luke Skywalker I don't think they could fix that no you don't think so, don't think so. All right, uh, glasses did you see that the black wire the black glasses black glasses. What is it you're looking for? My black. Oh, the loop? Glasses. This piece. And then the, my safety glasses. Oh, that? No, I don't know where they're at. Did you? Did you? Oh, there they are. By the light. By the light. Oh, thank yeah. you. So. So the only thing you have to say about it is you just hope you just hope. So, uh, yeah, well, I mean, I want to talk about this for a second. Do you mind? Yeah, go ahead. So, uh, something I want to play with. This is a patch store hill, in case anybody ever seen one of these you might have one they're about 80 bucks you can buy them it's got a little little board in it it's got sound to it it's great for like for like a 80 buck saber for a halloween costume this is great well i met a guy at a convention about a year ago aaron aaron lynn and uh he, he's a saber builder um and uh i bought it off him and i said i didn't want anything that's uh working i wanted and said he had a broken piece in his car so he told the sold it to me for 10 bucks so this cost me 10 bucks right here this little hill and uh we're gonna put some shroud work on it anthony was drawing up some pictures over there uh i think i like where he's going actually yeah i think uh we'll show the picture in a little bit but I, i'm, I'm digging it. what's that this so I'm thinking where he's going here. Um, he's going to uh, he's going to help me design this and work on this. And I don't know. I, I think I'm hoping that a CFX will fit in here. Probably a CFX. It's only a seven eighths going straight down. So it's kind of tight in there. But uh, hopefully we'll be able to work that. And and uh, something we're working on. Yeah, well, the size of all these new boards, it's like, it's doable. What's that? It's doable, you know, the size yeah. of these boards. Yeah. So small now. Yes. Yes, they are. Yeah, I think something like this we're going to go with. We're going to hide a lot of those rings with the straight piece up top, yeah? Kind of your idea? I'm thinking that. I'm thinking just expose the, uh, the curve. The now the curve is going to be under the. Uh, yeah, you can show this. Okay, so here's something like we're going for. I don't know if you can see it. Let's fix the light here. There we go. That's better. So uh, something there. Something there. And. Uh, yeah, we're gonna work on that. We're gonna make this into something, and I'm gonna I'm gonna think about putting the CFX in there. It's very tiny this hill. 
hat yeah. store. Yeah. So I mean, it is. Uh, might be. It might be fun. You know. So here, here we have just to talk about this too. This is a, uh, a short, like a practice. Look at practice hill, like a test hill, a little shorty. Just put it in like a little dagger almost. Turns the saber. Into, oh yeah, that's dagger. the uh, that's the blade I'm going to give you for cool. the testing. I'm going to take it's this home like, and use this to test myself. It's kind of like you said, like a dagger neopixel, just to Perfect. see it go up and down to know that yep. the that nope. the saber works. Yep. See some colors on it. So Anthony's pulling my butt out of the sling here. Play with this for a little while. This is pretty nice, man. This has smooth swing to it. Bring it over here a little closer to you. Pretty bright. Looks pretty nice on camera. So this is just a this is a blade that I fight with. So I have the end taped up. I think I broke the tip off of it. So I just taped it up with some packing tape. It's a it's a beater. You have a beater blade, yeah? Yeah. So uh, maybe later tonight we'll we'll do some dueling outside. Pop awesome. camera up somewhere, yeah? Awesome. You guys want to see us duel? You want to see me and me and Aunt go I out a little bit? I can't carry them out there though. What's that? I can't bring them with us though. That's obvious. Oh, all right. Maybe we can, maybe we can uh, duel it, and when we can post it afterward, or add it to the end of the video, or something. Yeah, this is a beautiful hilt, man. Let's show you guys some colors. We've got green right there. It's a little bit darker green. Oops, turn it off. And, uh, got like a reddish flash on top. Pink. Oh, that's like an aqua teal. Definitely more teal, more blue. Nice blue. The uh, class here is like a uh, like a pinkish red almost. And these are just stock settings on here. I didn't change any of the settings. This is this is what comes with the uh, crystal focus. And the reason I'm doing that like that. The, uh, the reason I'm doing that is, uh, you know, I want the, the, my buddy who's getting this hilt, I want him to be able to go in and adjust it, play with it, change the colors if he wants to do that. Um, something I love. You can Look at the orb. I don't know if you can see it, man, but right here. Oh, yeah. That, I love that fucking, that flare, man. That's badass. You know? Yeah, I like the blue. The blue on there is pretty nice. Let's keep going with some colors. That's a nice purple. Yeah. Looks kind of comes out kind of white on camera here. Now that's kind of pinkish to me. Let's keep going with some colors. That's, that's a little pinker. A little bit. That's really red right there. <laughs> That's kind of a person. That's orange, and I do like the orange. Something you don't see a lot on the on camera and on the, you know even in the cartoons. Nobody, I didn't see yellow. Yellow is kind of nice. You like the orange yet? Yeah, bronze and uh, bronze older public video games. So, oh, yeah, now we're back to green. There's about 12 colors presets in here. That green has a nice aura right there, a little bit, a little bit more lens flare coming off right here. I don't know if you can see it. That's kind of cool. Change up the font. Yeah. I added a couple songs to this. What do you mean, like in the uh, audio player? Yeah. That's a pretty nice font. I added the breathing. 
when it boots up. This is our Vader Red. I like the show though. The, uh, the smooth swing in Shoto is really nice. Like sometimes you get deeper. You hear it get deep? No. Down or yeah, it's kind of the, the sound changes as it gets deeper as it goes down. Love it. It's orange, man. Nice, orangey bronze. It's kind of gold on camera. This hill, yeah. You guys got any questions? Saber building. We're here for you. We're here to answer questions. Let us know. So, are you gonna are you gonna talk about any kind of uh, spoilers for that you heard about? Well, I kind of I kind of heard a few. I mean. One of the ones that really, um, I guess if I dare say it, twist my nipples, <laughs> would uh, would be the one where uh, Ray's lineage comes from. What do you think about that? Oh, I don't, I don't care anymore. No, you no. don't care. <laughs> you don't care. I like that. They don't, they don't I care. wanted to know so freaking bad where Ray came from. No, He's been bugging the shit out of me. They don't even can I say what I've heard? Sure, go ahead. She's Palpatine's granddaughter. Yeah. Is that what you hear? Is that what's yeah. in the book? I mean, uh, no, I didn't read a book about it. I oh, I thought you read The Last Jedi. Oh, no, see, The Last Jedi. Oh, not The Last Jedi. Not, not a, it's not, I didn't mean about, there's, <laughs> The Last Jedi book that I've read is not about this shitty movie. It's about It's the last, last movie. Jedi. Okay, yeah. No, 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 it's a, no, no, no. It's, um, it's a different story altogether. Okay. Yeah. I thought that was the basis of the movie. No, no. The, the Last Jedi book is from Legends. has nothing to do with uh, Luke dying or anything. Like that. Yeah. No. If you want to sit though, so uh, oh. you can just look at your legs. Wait, say that again? So they're not looking at your legs. You can like sit. I'll, 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 I'll bring this to you. Yeah. I'm just sit trying back to down. repair one of the joints here. I'm trying to flatten this out so maybe there's more room. Yeah. So this is a Graflex that we're working on. It's a, a 2.0, right? Yeah, I believe it is. The Rovid 2.0. And uh, I got a Shapeway chassis for it. Um, I'm doing the uh, Dark Ryo, the uh, the night chassis, but it's not the night. It's the uh, Padawan one chassis, I believe. It's fairly simple, simple chassis to do. What are you guys working on? Talk to me. Let's see. Any builds with the profile board? Actually, I do have a couple going on with that. Um, I'm still not sold on the profis. You? I got to get you to do the. Uh, I got to get you to do the, uh, like the programming and all that stuff. Still. Yeah. 
I need to get my hands on that. Yeah. Uh, uh, I just think the Collector Labs has it all, and it's just that. Uh, just fine, man. It's dependable. Would you would you agree with that? Well, you know, I guess you're, you're saying it's easier. Um, I don't think it's an easier board to wire because because you haven't programmed it yet, so you don't know. I don't know the. Habit. No, I, I've I've only wired one. I haven't had my hands on one yet. Yeah, so you, you kind of don't have the full picture yet. I don't know that I'm a good programmer. <laughs> yeah, this is gonna be nice. It's gonna be something nice. What do you think? Pretty nice cover tech on there. I like the bottom of it. I like how it's open. The bottom of this has a screen to it. Put the screen in there. I might even put a there we go. Put one of these bad boys in there too. I'll darken it up a little bit. Sealed it up nice. Just put a spring in here, not a spring, a uh, little brass, what would you call this? Brass screen. Kind of makes it less see through on the inside there. I like that. And that's how you customize a piece. Just find something that fits, do dad, pop it on. I don't know that I like this S curve. You want to hide that or you want to accent that? Oh, you say you don't like that. Part. I'm not sure. What do you think? I what? thought it was nice to accentuate it. Like with like, like an like, angle behind it? Like almost like it was like a Leia type of tilt. Okay. But if you don't like it, we have uh See, we, we don't have enough of that shroud material to cover the entire hilt from top right. to bottom. Right. So I was thinking we would like not use it on a certain part. And the part that I thought was interesting was that curve. Because it when you put the shroud on the other sides, then the curve will look like more of a curve, if you know what I'm saying. Because okay. it'll be the thinnest part. Yeah. Um, also, you know, it kind of gets this opportunity to... I don't think you're going to have to cut anything out, though. But sometimes, you know, I will use a shroud to cover up like a cutout that I had to put in to hold the battery, if you know what I'm saying. Like sometimes you have to cut out a section of hill yeah. to actually lay the battery in there. Yeah. So, um, but any any number of places you can you can do that. It is aluminum, yeah. so it's easy, going to be easy to work with. Yeah. I think I'd like to take a piece of it and kind of accent the bottom of it as well. What do you think? Like, we're not going to use the whole thing for the top, right? Yeah, you see the drawing here. You're going to have both, a piece uh, left. Both you know? uh, on, the, on the bottom and the, and the top. So there's oh, yeah, 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 too. yeah. Yeah, that's what I, I, I would like that, and too. I was actually also thinking to um, put one over, like, multi-shroud, like, something now, here. So let, let me ask you this, okay? I, I feel bad. They can't see this. Let's, <laughs> let's talk about this. So I'll tell you what I, I, I would... I would like and you know it'd be nice if if i could um because we have these details in here the grooves here yeah. on this hill um i'd love to like take this take wait take this and have some openings on it oh i see what you mean so yeah. you can see the detail of the inside great idea like right there like but i you know like i need to pick your brain a little for that oh, that's maybe, a good idea yeah like some kind of opening here and then uh, maybe even the same thing down here. My idea was to put the buttons there too, like get the buttons as uh, high here. up as possible, kind of yeah. in one of those grooves. In one of those grooves, so yeah. it's like recessed. Well, it's like recessed it. Yeah, yeah. There are um, spaces that we can do that here. And you know, we could actually also just bolt it in there, and then the shroud will cover the uh, the ax the, uh, the 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 pieces that hold it in. You know. But yeah, opening that shroud up would be cool so you can see these accents. And what I'd like to do is maybe even weather them a little bit, blacken them in a little. Oh, that's a great idea. 
and then buff it out, you know? Yeah, that's going to be a nice hill. So I'm big, so I, you know, I'm trying to show that I can build a hill for 10 bucks, <laughs> you know? And actually, uh, if, if I could say, I, 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 don't, I know you do this too. Everywhere I go, I look for scrap. I look for scrap. Um, and this is actually, I think, a piece of a tube from a bike seat that I cut down with a pipe cutter. And uh, looks nice. It's, it's aluminum. It's got a nice brushing to it, turned and knurled, you know? So I think that's it's gonna be badass. Piece there, and then a piece down here. And we're gonna have that hilt, that grip open in the center, right? The center grip's gonna be open. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I know. like that. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, I like and, that. And, you know, it's not the ideal placement for that curve. No, but, but it's okay. It's, like, it's a fun hill. It's yeah, the way it's made. Yeah. It is what it is. I'm, yeah. I'm trying, And I'm, I'm trying to make it more. You know what I mean? Right. And I think it is interesting because it's different from, like, if it was the Leia hill, the uh, the curve would be up here. Okay. But I think it's, like, interesting that it that it's like that. And then it's the right. fact that it's – is it three-quarter or seven-eighths? It's a, a seven-eighths. Seven-eighths. I'm fairly sure. You know, I like seven-eighths-inch Neopixel – Blades, yeah. I think they look really nice, like Rebels cartoon, thin and uh, like a laser. Okay. Like a laser. So that thinner, like yeah, uh, like a Rebels hill. Right? Plus, you know how small and light that hill is. Yeah. It's gonna balance better because the blade, blade. is so much lighter, less material in the yeah. seven eighths. Um, that the blade itself is lighter. Plus, we use the skinny strips in our blades. The skinny strips are yeah. way lighter than the thicker, like nice. twelve millimeter wide, nice. like you nice. know, strips. So these are seven millimeters wide. They are um, skinny strips from Adafruit. They're super lightweight, and inside the seven eighths nice. inch blade, you're gonna, like, you're gonna like it. You yeah. see, you see this ten dollar patch hill being a Neo Pixel seven eighths inch. Yeah, I do. Well, you know, you're who, look who you're talking to. You are the so man. If you want to. You know, you I'm biased. I'm biased. Why? Um, Yo, so why I'm biased you, towards the string stuff. Let me ask you a question. Why do you think I'm biased? <laughs> so you see this, uh, imagine that on the top, like, yes. like you said, with like the buttons recessed. Yes. I even think it'd be, it'd be balanced, like to kind of hold it like that. Yeah. To be, you, uh, you have different grip. Because it would be like thick here. Yeah. And like, you know, that would fit my hand because I, yeah. I like a tennis racket yeah. style grip. Yeah. So I'd probably grip it like that. But then your hand can fall back to do like kind of yeah. Count Dooku moves and yeah. things like that. This this whole hilt's only, what, what do you figure it is? About eight inches, 10 inches? Let's see how, here. How I, have, I have a, you have uh, a ruler. ruler right how here. long is this hilt? Put it down here. This hilt from tip of the S curve is 10 inches, which isn't bad. You know, like a Graflex is about 10 inches. But this is actually thinner than a graph flex. It feels smaller. It, it feels is. Smaller. It is. It's small. I mean, I know it's thinner, but it feels shorter than a graph flex. No, I, I believe. You have a graph flex around? Well, you have, you have your put-together graph flex? Not fully put-together. All right. Well, you know, let me show this. Here's, here's the bottom of a graph flex. Grab it. Just to show the difference so here. so much thinner, huh? See, yeah. Uh, Look how much thinner this patch store hilt is than the Graflex. You still have about a quarter inch room inside the, the Graflex hilt. So I wanted to thicken it up with this outer tube. And this piece of tube fits this beautiful, don't it? It slides yeah. in like butter. Yeah. It's like it's meant for it, right? Yeah. I found this in my garage. Oh, wow. Cutting bike parts. It was in my garage. And that's aluminum as well. Yeah, aluminum. Uh, you know, I would... I was into bikes back in the day, and I was making bike seats fancier, and uh, I cut the tubing down. So it was, I like the bike a little shorter. Mm. I'm a short little perk. Yeah, I'm into that, man. I'm going to cut that sucker up. Carve that bad boy. $10 patch hill. I've been talking about doing it for a year, you know. Get around to doing it. Let's see. Ah, classic glass eye, Joshua wrote. On the patch store hilt, you're saying? Classic, classic glass eye. Oh, 
we could do that on here. This is round. Could open it up for a glass eye in there. Oh, I think he might be saying that because the uh, the emitter looks like a Graflex cut to it. Yeah. So we we can cut the shroud to kind of enhance Open that look, it. and also maybe maybe he means they have the glass side to on the outside of enhance that enhance the Graflex. Yep. Like on the outside of the shroud yeah. here. Yeah, that would look nice. That would look nice. And I'm actually I'm a fan of bunny ears. I like bunny ears. You know. Or like that last hilt that you did at with that where the that little hump to the back is actually the buttons you have oh, up yeah. there. That was beautiful, that little piece. The hood ornament, I think you called it, right? Yeah. <laughs> I love that. That was awesome. That's the Imperial Knight hilt that I made. Yeah, this is gonna be a fun hilt, man. Back store. Ten bucks. Yeah, you I mean, you know, look, I, I these are 80 bucks, really, you know, but it comes with a blade. It's a, uh, it's a little blade. comes with an inhale LED. It does. Yeah, it's a little inhale LED. It's like one, Wait, so one die. Like a, that's a newer. One die, one color. It's a, it's um, a if normal, you go to the right? patchstore.com and type in lightsaber, uh, also you can find these on Amazon. Nice. Again, Amazon, 80 bucks. I found them on my phone on Amazon, 80 bucks. Um, and like I said, I bought this one for 10 bucks off Aaron Lynn at a convention. It was broken. So I just took the board out and I trashed it. Or I think I gave it to you to see if you were going to play with it. Or was I supposed to send it, it to might Michael? I don't know. It was, I, I don't think it was like a, it was a patch store hill. So I don't even know if Michael was something that Michael can fix, you know. But I trash it. It's beat. You know what I mean? And we'll, uh, we'll put a CFX in this bad boy. Okay, here, here's the loot. Just like check. Check what I did here, okay? Just to make sure. Um, you know what? To uh, let's make sure you have enough light here. I might be able to turn on more lights. Yeah, let's get rid of that for now. Nice Beautiful work. Beautiful. And fixed it up. Nice. Yep. Looking good, buddy. Nice. Looking good. Looking good. Okay, so I think next thing you want to put this button in. You want to mount the button now, or you oh, want to yeah. you want to go with the uh, we can go with the green wire for the the data. Yeah, me, now that's going to the that bottom of the board. Let's figure that part out. Or I could do the negative here. I have the uh, the white negative coming from the. Uh, from the recharge oh, I got to scroll down to NeoPixel again. I am all the way up in button management systems on the on the Plector Labs Crystal Focus 10. Anthony is referring to the manual, manual right now. I mean, and as he said to me about a half hour ago, you know, every hill he does, he refers to the manual about a hundred times. <laughs> and that's about right. Um, that was right before I was I was yeah, actually beating Harris. So you he know? took a beating. Then we told him about the manual. We beat him with the manual. Manual hurts a lot more than it used to. It's longer. Yeah. It's thicker if you print it out single pages yep. and roll it up. It's it's a beating. Yep. Up and down. You could up catch a down. beating. Don't come Stroll. don't come around here. Yep. Now yes. we had our our four white wires coming off of here. You had them. Pre-colored. I just want to make sure that my one wire is going the right way. Our green goes to the board, which is right here. So that will get next. But uh, down here, some of our charge port wires need to come together. And uh, okay, let's see. So we got the two reds. Oh, I see where that goes. One red. Once we cut these, probably cut them soon. One's going to fold back in and come up to the board, to the top of the board. And then uh, one of the black here is going to go to the battery. And then one red is going to go to this battery. Um, and then we're going to probably one of the last things we'll do is wire the speaker. Because the speaker acts like the cap on this uh, just caps in, you know. Right. So I think what you want to do, though, is take two green wires and uh, 
Why the very doing? thin 30 gauge yeah. and let's uh, pull them off the board just out, out, you know, uh, where the speaker's going to go Coming off towards the, the end so that yeah. uh, you just have it all ready. You're just going to kind yeah. of push the speaker and the in last nice ready. two little, the speakers are the last two over here at the top. We're going to go to the bottom of the board. All right. Do you see where this is? Um, yeah. That is in between the two blacks there? Yeah. So uh, that would be the green. Yeah. Okay. So um, you can probably put that. Yeah, wait, I'm, I'm kind of lost here. See. So there's what we're looking Let at. Let me actually prepare that for you real quick. Okay. Yeah. Help me out. Ah, ah! Help me out, baby. Yeah, man. Oh. Yo, my belly is today is sponsored by Arby's Beef and Cheddar. <laughs> I'm usually sponsored by Shake Shack. Good I'm shit. I threw down two of those bad boys. Call me Fat Boy Jedi. <laughs> All right, so do you see that one right in the middle? Right here. No. That one right there? No, oh, that's going to the, the green. That's the green, okay. okay. But we're going to the top here or the inside here? Or go, to the, go to the top. It's got to be the top. cleanest, yeah. straightforward connection possible. That's the NeoPixel data. It is very... Uh, very important. It's not only very important, but it's very... What's the word? I wouldn't say fragile, but detrimental. You know it's a, uh, I guess, important is the best word. Detrimental. That is detrimental to our build. Release it through that way. Right here. We're going to bring this green, bring this green right here, down to here, down to there. Second, second port right there. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to heat this up a little bit, clean it with a little flux. I should say dirty it up with a little flux. How'd you you pass fare? me the tweezers. Thank you. I trimmed back the green. Mm -hmm. I put tin in the wire. So you haven't done a CFX for yourself yet? No, I haven't. I've done. I've only really built one, just that one so far. So no, I don't have a CFX. I was either going to put one into the uh, your flame, right? Into the flame or into this patch store hill. 
right. really, I'm, I'm kind of done first. Yeah, I'm kind of playing with the patch store hilt until the flame hilt comes. Now, did anyone get their flame hilt? Or well, is, uh... I, you know, I don't know. There was a video released about two weeks ago. I saw. Oh, okay. And and they got a flame, but it's in a foreign language. They they built a hilt, a flame, CFX, but I can't understand what they say. Oh. They're not in English. You mean the video's not in English? Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah, buddy. I don't know if anyone has their flame their flame lightsaber yet, but uh, um, Harris is waiting. I'm waiting patiently. I was told in uh, I ordered it in February when it was first released. I was told six months, and uh, you know, I'm willing to wait. I'm okay with that. I'm uh, being patient. You know, sabers don't come easy. It takes time. We're going right to here, right? Correct. Yeah, I'm trying to set you up with like another. Uh, you know what I did? Uh, I forgot a heat shrink. I can give you a piece. All right, you want to trim me up a little piece of heat shrink? Drop that back on there. It was a nice joint too. Yeah, I'll give you the. Uh, there's a um, an angle on one side. You can aim it that way. Yeah. You can cut the heat shrink with a little bit of an angle to it. Yeah, Joshua Garcia asks, "What's a flame lightsaber?" You know, I'm going to pull up a picture of yeah, it so you guys can it, see. It, uh, it is freaking kind of cool. sharp looking. It's it's made by Sabercraft. Um, they're a they're a saber company in Turkey. Um. So and the uh, the prototype was released and talked about online in around late January, early, early January, early February. Um, and I saw it, and I basically sold my soul for the money to uh, to build one. <laughs> <laughs> um. Just something about the style. It, it just uh, it spoke to me, you know. Um, and I get why they call it the flame. They're calling it the flame because it looks like a uh, a torch almost. Oh yeah, it does. Yeah, it's kind of like I just love the copper accents that Sabercraft does to their hilts. Oh, yeah. Their control boxes yeah. are prime. Just beautiful, so glamorous. Yeah. This hilt is just you know what it looks like. It looks like something from the expanded universe, like the real, real expanded universe, not the not the movies that they have now, but you know, the, when there was a lot of Jedi, when there's right. a lot of like Jedi and Luke's era, maybe 30 years after Return of the Jedi, the Jedi are getting stronger, right? Maybe this it's 40 years later, there's a, it's a good time. There's um, good times. Uh, an alien or a really super cool human being that just has this lightsaber, the flame. I mean, can you imagine? It looks like, oh, looks it's like just, a torch. It with, is uh, cool. Yeah, I just with, love um, this. And that, if you, I don't know if you can pole. see, it's got it's what It's going to come with this, right? It's going to come with the. Uh, it comes with everything. It with comes the, with the chassis for you to chassis. build this with. Yeah, the cha the chassis uh, opens up. They call it the saber thorax. <laughs> like, uh, like if you know what a thorax is, it's like the uh, oh, main, like a spine. the main, yeah, the main section on like a like a bug or you know what I mean. Oh wow! It's like the body that connects the upper to the lower. This is um, one of the sweetest, very cool. sweetest hilts. Very beautiful. Very Star fan amazing. asks uh, Harris, "Do you have a favorite cannon hilt?" Um. You know, I'd have to say the Graflex does it for me. Um, I really do like a Graflex. I've had a Graflex for about 20 years now. Um, I only recently converted my real Graflex about two years ago, three years ago. So, And I just used a, a basic crystal chamber from Shapeways. It's kind of hodgepodge, and it has a, uh, a, a nano biscuit, like, Two or three in it, like it's an mm. early, it's an early uh, board. So I'm always someday surprised. I'd like to re like, it and yeah. Who knows? Maybe, maybe, maybe I'd like to put a Yoda chassis in it. Oh wow! Yeah. How, how would that be in a in a real Graflex? You know what I mean? 
um, maybe a real Yoda chassis with uh, with the CFX man with smooth swing. Oh wow! Oh my God, that'd be amazing to do. You know? Yeah. So, but I like my Graflex the way it is. I, my 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 favorite Canon hilt would probably be the Graflex, and that's one of the reasons. I don't know if you guys have seen about uh, about a year and a half ago. I built uh, a uh, the uh, what you call it? Hilt from the from the video game. Uh, Force Unleashed. Yeah, the Force Unleashed. What's that? I can't, my brain. Galen Merrick. Yeah, yeah I Star built the Killer. Galen Merrick. The Star well, no, Killer. you built that from scratch. Yeah, well, basically. I built like, that from scratch, but using MHS parts. Right. So what I did is like almost every piece on the, there is customized. Yeah. To to get it to do what I needed it to do for the. I mean, that was fully Star customized. Killer. It was beautiful. Um, and uh, one of the reasons why I like the uh, the Star Killer is because it's based on a Graflex. Like I could see in that story. You know, I could see, uh, you know, Vader throwing Galen Merrick the parts while he's cowering on the floor after Vader kicked his ass today and said, you know, all right, here's some parts for you to tinker with. Let's see what you can do and come up with, you know, um, which is, again, someday I'd even like to take a Graflex 2.0 and uh, and make that into a, a star killer. I've seen a couple guys. Do yeah, that. I want to do that with like yeah. an old Graflex I have that is. Uh, it's a vintage, but it's like it's one that I mean, Michael Murphy told me himself, who's a Yoda on FX Sabres, that it, it probably wasn't worth um, one second. I think the dog is going to uh, is going to upset this. He's pushing you right here. Come here, boy. <laughs> Even Michael Murphy said it's not worth converting. It's got rust inside and stuff like that. Oh, so yeah. I want to I want to cut that up. Beat it up. And uh, and. You know, make something out of it kind of like akin to what Sloth Furnace did so many years ago when he made the love derelict it. lightsaber. Love it. Really love that hilt. I think that idea, just the idea to take a Graflex I don't top know if section. I, like this joint. I don't know if this is good for me. Yeah, that's a super important joint. Like what I was going to say before was it is, uh, I was saying fragile, but what I, what I really meant is it has to be isolated, you know, because it's, it can get easily corrupted, that data can. Gotcha. Yeah. Joshua Garcia says probably Darth Vader. As far as hilt from Canon, um, he has an old removable blade version. He must mean uh, one of the like MRs or the MR, Hasbro yeah. type sabers. Yeah. Um, I always I always had so much fun with those. I think, <laughs> I think nice. those they, are they so nice, much fun. They were nice, beautiful hilts for their time. I can't know? believe the... Like, just what they give you for the money, I think is really great. When you could get those for like less than 125, sometimes uh, back in the day, they were like, sometimes they were on sale at Toys R Us and stuff when there was still yep. Toys R Us around, they'd be on sale for like 99. And uh, those were, those were really fun. Yep. Starfan says, yeah, the Graflex is his favorite. He likes the, the Force Awakens version. So I have a Force Awakens okay. version. That's that's my lightsaber um, that Michael Murphy gave to me Still and made for joint. me. And uh, yeah, I mean, sometimes it takes a couple couple tries. Yeah. That that way, at least you don't have to repair it later. You know, you get it right, get it right this time. Make it right the first time. Yeah. But yeah, you know that is one of the things with the boards getting smaller and smaller is They're that it becomes to yeah. So the angle of your soldering. Iron means a lot more now. Uh, the angle that you hold it, uh, depending on the joint that you're trying to hit, um, the closer and closer the board gets to being completed, like it is right now, it only has a couple more connections to make here, and it's just making oh, wow, it more and wow. more difficult uh, because the pressure of uh, whatever's kind of pushing up on the board at the moment is uh, presenting the issue. That's why he has to use a helping hands and stuff like that. So. Harris, you could also use uh, this this helping hand oh, if yeah. you need to, yeah. but th this is like not weighted as well as the other one. Yeah. So it's just kind of lighter, but I'm gonna put a little more. I kind of ate up some of the solder on that pad. Yeah, this uh, flame. You've been kind of been waiting for this for a while. I want to say it's been a eight year. Months. You know how? Eight oh, months. eight months. Okay, because sometimes you know how fast like a year will go by. Yeah. Um, I was thinking, you know, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely think it's worth the wait. 
I really, really <laughs> like this. This is like a, just one of the coolest designs. And um, actually, this, the slits that you're talking about doing on this uh, Pox Store Saber, kind of now I'm thinking it, uh, it could be kind of like the bottom section of this flame has those kind of slits yeah. that could work. Those are very clean slits that we could bevel. I love I love when you do the hilt by hand and you're doing using the hand files yeah. and you're able to get a really nice clean edge. And then when you have your nice clean edge, you decide to get the really nice clean corners. Yep. And then once you get the really nice clean uh, round corners or whatever you want, you actually take the time to you go really in and do the and do the bevels, you know. Yeah. And you can kind of it, it's a, taking a chance because you might you might actually. Uh, kind of hurt it by doing the bevels if you slip but it's a fun uh, it's a fun thing to get all that light reflecting off of those know, bevels. You tell me you take a look my hands ain't what they used to be i don't know if you guys know i'm about nine weeks out of open heart surgery i don't really like to talk about that too much but uh my hands shake a little bit after surgery so anthony does some of the more tedious work between us it looks good, but you know what? Let me make it shinier. Okay. It's not quite shiny. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a good joint. So what we like to have in a joint, we like to have it kind of funnel up like a, like a mountain almost, like a slope. And uh, lay the wire right on there and have that kind of envelop that wire, that little mountain. So and sometimes when you get a nice joint, they come up nice and shiny. And uh, sometimes not so much. More mine, not so much. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes you know it's um, it's it's cloudy in a sense, but it's shiny underneath. Uh, that's that's okay too. But this, what I did here was uh, at least I got it to a little bit of a point here. I'm just gonna slip the point off. Okay, so I think you can bring your uh, heat shrink up and kind of Hit it. and kind of just We're try to here. try to put that that point over over that yep have a good night star fan he's got to go Peace thanks, out. For, thanks for watching we appreciate you thank you st production says good to see you recovering harris yeah thank you. you know i i saw harris like kind of uh, shortly after this surgery i think um yeah, or did i see after. a picture yeah uh well you looked so it was it was a Maybe I, I saw you once and I saw you again. You look so much better that that second time, right? Like yeah, you had I recovered a lot, like in yeah. a quick in a quick period after I that. I feel but better. Um, right first after four you weeks were tough. Yeah, you weren't feeling that great right off the start, but you kind of yeah, you kind of got healthy. It got better, uh, after it got better that. about yeah. a month, month and a half in. I was in a lot of pain. Um, they cracked my ribs pretty good. They uh, had open heart surgery. I'm part robot now. I'm part uh, like Darth Vader. <laughs> you know. Um, so I have a, uh, I might as well talk about it. You know? I have a, uh, my aortic valve in my heart wasn't opening properly. It wasn't allowing the blood out. So, you know, well, just like Vader, man, Vader had some, uh, some appendages cut off. So basically they just replaced them <laughs> with some mechanical parts. You know, um, I did have a choice between a mechanical one. I did not go full mechanical. I went bio. The oh. reason is um, with the bio valve, they say they don't last as long. I might need this again in about 15 years. Oh. But uh, they have to take a medication every day, daily, with the bio with the metal one. Oh, okay. So the biological. So it's not I like only rejecting had, it or yeah, something? Yeah, yeah. It's like your body wants to reject the metal. Oh, man. I went with a, uh, a biological valve. So, uh, you know, if anybody's asking, I, I got a gorilla valve, so I'm super strong now. <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah so uh, i got the biological um in and hopefully uh you know in about 15 years if this does go bad uh the surgery then won't have to open up my ribs they can do it um uh like a uh a a catheterization robot. oh okay they can go in through your groin actually yeah i know that sounds pretty, pretty crazy they can go up through the groin into the heart and uh and replace it that way so i won't need that crack my chest open again i got a scar about from here to here 
but uh, I wear it proudly, man. You know, basically through I got two phones connected to me now. <laughs> Yeah, like one's telling and, you to uh, read out, right? One's telling me to read out, and one's telling me how much uh, go-go juice I need to, mm. keep, to keep it going, you know? And uh, it's kind of cool, you know, part bionic man. It's interesting to know that. Uh, so amazing. Yeah, <laughs> so I'm amazing. here today to talk about it, Yeah. you know? And uh, I don't know if you guys know, I'm 53. I think I've said that before. Uh, hopefully, I have a couple more good years left in me, you know? Um Played a gig last night. You guys know I'm a musician. I played with my band last night. I played three full sets, three hour long, hour and ten minute sets. Had a great time. Had a packed house. Yeah, and see here, awesome. here in in America, we 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 change the time for some reason. Like daylight every so time. often, daylight saving. So we went yeah. back an hour last night, and Harris gave us an extra hour. Played an extra hour, so as not to let the place down, right? To like, yeah, to so kind we played of, an uh, extra hour set list. Just, just because it, what it, it became, it was two o'clock, then it goes back it to one o'clock, one o'clock and so you're supposed to play two till o'clock. two o'clock or whatever yeah. it was. So that's, that's yeah. really funny. Yeah, it was good. It was good. I felt good. I felt strong. Um, and I'm here today to talk about it. And even better than I love my gigs. Also, I love coming here building lightsabers. Um, so, so what do you think? Let's say that. Yeah, Let's that, get this uh, next part in here. That looked good, so I can. Um, oh yeah, you know what? I need to put that button in as well. Yeah, I'm gonna heat that up. St. Production right says here. you're more machine than man now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Yeah. yeah, that's what I think too. Yeah, I'm. I'm a big fan of the old six million dollar man show. So I, uh, you know, we can rebuild him, make him better, stronger, faster. Live to build a, another day. Yeah. Lightsabers. Yeah. But I feel good. Thanks for asking, guys. What do you think of that? How's that look? Yeah, it's looking it's good. nice to have a second set of eyes. Now, this uh, this next one, this I'm not sure if this is the right one. I moved it out of the way. But that, I think, is our, our here's our two red, right? Mm -hmm. This is coming off our kill switch. This is pretty see the little, uh, let me see, cause I, you know what, one of these connections that I made here, is there, is there, can you look at it with the loop right here? What is this? Something looks like a hair or something. Did I take it? Oh, here it is. To make sure, like, what is that? This is the, this is the ground for both of the buttons. Yeah. And I just want to inspect around that. That doesn't look healthy. Uh, I think it's good. Okay. It has a little tail sticking out. The top here. You want to trim it? Or you want me to just I mean, a little trim? I can't. Kind of hard to see it. Oh, you can see it right there. Trim. Yeah. Come in this way. I'll be careful. That looks like it's going to take go. off. I think there. I got it. Oh, you got it? Okay. Yeah, tell me what you think. Then. You see it? It was laying across the top, but it wasn't touching. It was sticking up. Oh, I see. So oh, I just got rid of it. Okay, that's cool. Oh, yeah. All right. Oh, um, oh, there's markings on the board, and I thought one of those was like solder sticking. No, yeah, those are like see. those are just like the white backings of the, uh, the like the um, kind of the the placements of all the of all the yeah you know what i like about these uh, cfx's it has a red light on the board right right and that, that gives that you signals up. for yeah. certain things yeah. yeah so i think you're really close to hooking up the power but what i think you should do first is um hook up just two slender uh, green wires green? from here for the speaker okay and we're going to come off the side here i'm going to make them about three inches long and right? that's so can we come, can we come out here. the back? Yeah. To come, uh, to come below. It, can you? Can you? Yes, like you, you can. can. Right here. Yeah. So you know what? I will. I will pretend pre those. Yeah. And I'll start making up two wires here. And I think about three inches should be good, right? Yeah. Three inch long. Yeah. Maybe like three and a half for now, and then you trim back. Okay. Can add a little more plate safe. It's always nice to have a little bit more wire. You can kind of cut back. You can always cut back, but you can't add, right? Right. Well, you can add, but it looks messy. Yeah, it's it's sloppy. I, I like to keep it all 
a one nice wire. Not have to have cut marks in it if you don't need them. So I'm just pretending these wires here. Now you did not have to look at the manual to tell me that these were the speaker. Um, I'm fairly sure that they are the speakers. You know, um, so for the past couple years, the uh, Crystal Focus boards, the uh, the switches, and all the pads and everything have been in kind of a uh, a nice similar place. unison. Yeah, they're always in the same spot basically, but the CFX changes that. So we. Uh, I think that they are the two speakers. Let's double check. Anyway. I will look Let's play it safe. here. Oh, you know what? I brought it. Brought it to another window. And actually, let's just do this because you're watching Building Sabers with Jenna Hash. <laughs> brought to you live. From Starship Disk. What's this? Uh, oh, there we go. Space Wind. Okay, so we are just looking at the uh, manual for the Crystal Focus 10. Mm -hmm. And oh, yeah, I have to go up a bit. I'm just going to scroll up to where, uh, just to confirm speaker location we are both 90 percent sure which okay, so i just tin those was right? wires was that right was it the right spot we have to just make sure this is a completely new setup you know it's kind of more like more like the profi more like the uh yeah. these other boards uh yeah. like these open source boards where a lot of the connections are around the outside they're a yeah. lot smaller the entire board is smaller and it's not quite as small as the profi i'm doing another Graphlex right now for Zeocles, that one's almost ready. That one's switching from uh, one board to the other, from Profi to CF10, and we're noticing that the CF10 has got, uh, is a little bigger than the Profi, and therefore I had to trim his, uh, his chassis a little bit just to fit. Uh, the CF10, which is a little wider. It's it's not any longer, I don't think. It's just a little wider than the Profi. So I know that there's a, uh, oh yeah, there's the, I actually have it on a different screen, so I'm confirming as I as I scroll up here, but I have it on a, uh, a view monitor on the Starship Destiny over here. Okay. Harris and I are almost too old to see where we're sitting so okay so this is just for you guys to see what we're talking about uh this is the speaker location is uh at the bottom of the board near the uh corner on the usb or sd card side and that's the ones that i just um that i just pretend but we're going to go on the bottom side so actually uh hopefully you know you won't really notice like that there's wires there. There's only a couple connections I made on the top just for well, most of the wires are going to be hidden on this hill. Yeah, that's that's the way I really like when I when I see a hilt that's done that way. I always appreciate that. So that's the way we try to look. do it. You'll see a few wires, but but not really. You know, everything's kind of hidden. You won't know where they're coming from or where they're going, but you know they're in there doing something, <laughs> right? Yeah, Definitely in there doing something. This manual's gold. Gold, I tell you. What's that? The manual's gold. Oh yeah, absolutely. Okay. You Tinned just have up. to be careful when you uh, yep. wire to this because of the way it's got to kind of lie. Yep. So you have a clean surface here. Actually, it takes us real quick. Yeah, that's the line. You have to let's see if you get yep. there. Yep. And you know the way you want to aim the wires too. everything kind of has to be thought about you know this is one thing i, I kind of learned from watching mad cow on the custom saber shop yes. or his own channel from Je from uh, genesis custom sabers i don't think there's a video that goes by that i make that i make with harris at least that we don't talk about mad cow for at least a minute because the, man, the master you guys can get can learn a lot from mad cow i learn a lot from every time i watch his videos awesome. and just you know 
he knows about all the smallest details and he knows them all first. It's like 10 years before I would realize something, Mad Cow would already realize it. Uh, so he's just, he's just ahead. Like the way you just wired that, I would actually suggest aiming the wire in a different direction. Well, what, what I'm gonna do unless, now- Unless it can fold Yeah, I'm gonna back. pull it back a little bit okay. and it's underneath. Okay. So it's going to tuck in. Oh, true, But true. at the same time, now I, I still You're planning have the other one now. I'm planning the other one. Yeah, yeah. so. I'm going to put the other one on, and they're going to uh, pull down. Come, basically. They're going to come more to the back end. Yeah, because, like, the point I'm trying to make is uh, one that, you know, Mad Cow already, already yeah. knows about, which is which is to uh, plan the wiring out. So well, that's I one thing where my that wire is going to. Paris is thinking about is not only the wire that he's soldering, which happens to be the speaker wire, but he's also planning like speaker wire number two because he knows that one has to maybe aim one way. It just Correct. becomes more important when we're dealing, like we said, with these smaller and smaller boards Correct. that uh, it just becomes more important to plan the wiring. You know, it was different. Like I was handling a crystal focus version of 4.3 the other day. I have one in my drawer and I was looking at it and I'm thinking like, look how, uh, it was actually, you know, friendlier in a, in a sense when the when the board was was bigger. So it's almost like you're very lucky if you were. Let it go. I'm gonna retake this. I don't like the end here. You know, if you were around back when uh, back when the Crystal Focus Four, Crystal Focus Three was out, and you were able to get your hands on one of those, or you're able to get one later, or maybe you got a CF Five, which actually became much smaller. But one of the one of the cool things about being like our age, if you're like Harris or you're like me and you were and you were around back then and you were working on those type of boards, and then you can kind of grow with the board. And we and we've been growing with it as the board yeah, gets you know, smaller. The board. It would be very intimidating for me, I think. Well, not very intimidating, but it'd be more intimidating than it was to like, let's say, work on the Crystal Focus 4. Uh -huh. If I was to go straight to Crystal Focus 10 to learn on, because yeah because everything is a lot denser on yeah, the board you know, I, and there's I, a lot more functionality to the I board. See a, I see a lot of a lot of newbies. And they know, go and straight to and it. And they right to the CFX, man. I guess it's, you know, right it's, it's not as expensive as it used to be if to screw up a crystal focus. Like, you know, there'd be people, like when I had Irv um, on the conversation a couple of weeks back, you know, we were, I think we hit on the fact that sometimes uh, there was like crystal focus back in the day on eBay for like $450. So imagine if you paid $450 for crystal focus 4.3, you got your uh, board, you know, you got kind of bamboozled from somebody that charge you 450 for $150 a board just because they're rare and what we like to call them uh, what do we call them scalpers yeah, exactly. and and they yeah. would they would scalp it and then you'd get the board imagine screwing that up you know $400 at least now you can go straight to the crystal focus 10 uh, screw up the board and it's only $80. It's $80 well, you know, $80, $80 is a lot, but it, at least you it's came to my different house than a 150 or 450 A month ago. How many boards did I put in your hand that I destroyed? Did maybe you, maybe three or four. Three or four, right? Yeah. I mean, so those boards are 160 bucks a piece, you know? So uh, you're talking growing with the board. I'm talking growing pains, you know? <laughs> it hurts every time you destroy a board, but that's how you learn. You know, and I'll be honest with you. I mean, you know, more power to the guys who are out there and who are building a saber, who build one CFX and then turn around and go into business for themselves. But I, I mean, I built sabers for three years for me and my friends before I ever decided to build one professionally and sell them. Mm. You know what I mean? So you have to have a little bit of, of, you know, time to work with it. It takes time. It takes time. You gotta like anything. You know, I'm a musician. It takes time to hone my craft as a musician, you know? You're an artist. How long have you been drawing it? All my life. Yeah, so, you know, just put time in. He's got tenure. And, and it's great that people can do that, but, I mean, not everybody can do that. Um, we're going to run these wires out the back end. You want to look? You want to take a peek at the two speakers? We're kind of trained to go back to the back end now. That's something okay. good. That's something good. Now, did so you want to put any kind of? Uh, back. Did you want to put a very thin heat shrink? I think you have a piece here. If not, yeah, I can. And, Actually, I can put some. Um, some where's that very thin, clear one that we had around here? 
If not, I'll give you another piece. Since it's clear, it's very hard to see. It disappears. Yeah, yeah, there it is. So well, maybe just uh, ones, right? yeah, and just get them going on there. That way, those can't touch ever. Yeah. Hopefully, there's enough uh, like horizontal or uh, vertical space there when we try to lay the board down. Yeah, I think we're good. But actually, you know, we don't have to uh, sink it all the way down tonight. We just want to kind of get to the point where maybe we can test yeah, fire it up. <laughs> Well, but actually, I'll have to, you know, I'll have to work up the SD card to go into uh, uh, NeoPixel mode. So actually, I can go do that. Um, yeah. I need to get on the different laptop for that. Okay. The SD card's in this. Just because I think you're getting kind of closer yeah. to the point where you might yeah, try to fire that up. The first, a couple more connections. A couple more. What well, couple more? So we're going to... We have our switches mounted. We have an accent LED mounted and hidden already underneath. Um, so next, what we're going to do, we're going to uh, we're going to mount some of our our battery wires and stuff like that. And they're kind of our final connections. And it's got to work up the uh, the SD card so that it's got the proper configuration for the for the NeoPixel. Yeah, ST Production says he's got a hot tub circuit board that he's been practicing soldering on. Yeah, that's a good idea uh, to practice like on a breadboard yeah, or something. Well, you know, you know what's funny? I tell people, like a lot of people say to me they want to learn how to solder. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I tell them to do is go to like a Goodwill and, and buy an old radio. Or a lot of people just have a piece of junk around. Piece of junk. Right? Like, Open it up and take that soldering iron that's, you know, or even a just uh, degrees. How about, you know, an, an old MR type of lightsaber board that Take you might apart. have from the, uh, uh, you know, from a conversion. The best way to learn how to fix it and how to build it. Um, this is something that came from me from my RC car days. Uh, a lot of guys are into RC cars who are now doing sabers. Um, when you build an RC car, I used to build them, beat the balls off them. I used to make like four foot ramps yeah, and jump these RC cars in my freaking street. In my, in, Oh, I, yeah, I would yeah. start working on the car. I'd buy the Love kit those. and I would bring it home about five, six o'clock at night. And then uh, by uh, about six o'clock in the morning, the thing was ready to run without the body for my first test. So I would take it out to the street and I would, I actually beat one so bad one night that I had just built that I ended up having to take it apart and rebuild it. <laughs> so that's the best thing about building sabers is because when you build them, and you break them, you know how to fix them. You're, you're a mechanic, you know, know your product, know how to, know how to fix stuff. This way you can beat it and then you can fix it. Run these wires now. Chassis here. I'm getting a little bit concerned because it says it's 1018. It says what? It's 1020. Oh, it's after 10. Okay. What do you think about this place that we're trying to hit up for today? You want to hit the diner? I mean, we because can go. That diner, are we trying to close early? Yeah, we can go and we're going to go get some food and come back. Absolutely. I'd be down with that. You know, um, please pick up. Come on back and watch us at about 11 o'clock tonight. We're maybe later. Maybe, maybe later. 1145. Okay. And uh, maybe by that point, we'll be able to show you our first boot up. Yeah, we we're, uh, we're expecting to have Gabe over tonight. He couldn't make it. Um, and, yeah, uh, country. Well, not only was he out of the country, but he got back last night, and then, uh, and then uh, he had kind of a, a medical issue going on uh, with his wife, so he had to help her, 
and he will be back next week. So we'll we will check good luck up with Gabe. Gabe. Hope everything's all right, buddy. Yeah, good luck, Gabe. Good luck, Gigi. And uh, we will see Gabe next week. Probably uh, on Sunday or something. He will he will stop by and we'll get we'll get him. Yeah, maybe on the next Shaver talk we'll be able to talk about this little this draft life show that we're working on here. Yeah, for sure. If we don't if we don't have that uh, testing later, we will have it uh, testing next Sunday probably. Yeah. Hopefully, in the meantime, I'll have a different video for you guys, too. But um, thanks for checking us out right now. We will come back. I, I will hook this up again in like an hour and a half, hour and 45 when we get back. Yeah, join us. We'll and, be here for uh, a while tonight. You know, maybe, maybe we'll actually catch some people. Like, uh, I know sometimes if, if, we're, if it's around midnight, you know, we might even catch Irv going to work. He might, he might see us. Yeah, um, I love that'd, be, <laughs> that'd be pretty cool. Uh, just because some people uh, on the other side of the world will actually be uh, getting up and going to work soon. So uh, maybe, we'll, maybe we'll catch a couple friends on the other side that are sleeping right now, too. But thanks for hanging out with Jedi Hash Harris from Saber Talk. I'm Space Windu from Saber Talk, and uh, <laughs> we will come back and work on this in about an hour and a half. Anybody that is still up, come back and uh, feed check, our check us out. Harris will inject himself with some more, uh, some up. more. Yes, I'm gonna be needs, bad needs... pancakes. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. Pancakes, <laughs> zero sugar. <laughs> yeah, man. It's looking nice. Yeah. It's going to be a nice show. And this is for uh, Robert, right? Robert Cohen? Oh, ST Productions is coming back to his home state in New Jersey in a few months. And maybe he'll see us at a con yeah, or something. Man, yeah, we were just up. at a con in, in Edison a couple months back. And we did a, a little talk with the, uh, with this, with the, uh, with the uh, TSL. And... Uh, you know, we will. We we're always getting invitations from TSL to go to other other cons and stuff like that, and we just haven't haven't been back because we've been so busy. And Harris has been going yeah, through some uh, some uh, medical stuff that we will get back to TSL, and we want to we want to visit them again. That was a lot of fun. We went to Edison, but we definitely want to go back. Yeah, a couple a couple of years ago, me and Harris went to Philadelphia for another Comic yeah. Con. Philly and, Comic Con. Yeah, yeah. And, and and you know our sabers are so bright when we go to these comic cons. It's like people want to stop and take take pictures and yeah. stuff, and uh, it's pretty Love fun. It. Pretty Love fun. That. They all they all think we're like real Jedi because our lightsabers are just like so bright. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, uh, we will check you in about an hour and a half, and uh, please come back. We appreciate you guys uh, watching this, and uh, we'll have more to show you in a little bit. Thanks for watching. Peace out. We'll see you in a little bit.